My goodness. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all. Lucky there's more people coming in just now. Into the room, my goodness. We're fairly full. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, Hello sir. Hello. Hi, hello. Hi. Hello. My hello. goodness. We're just waiting for everyone to, to come along. I'll just uh, give it another couple of minutes and then we'll get started. Everyone okay? Everyone doing thumbs up? Everyone okay? Yeah? Yeah. Excellent. Great stuff. Hello. So, let me see. I know a couple of people coming in. We'll just start in a couple of, a couple of moments. I just see there's more people kind of logging on. My name's Ken. For those that don't know me, hello, my name's Ken. Um, and then I'm going to show you how you can make a very, very effective first impression when you introduce yourself to my interview. My goodness, hello. Oh. Please, Zoe, too. Excellent. Ah. There we go. So I'll just ask you if you just put yourself on mute just now. How do we do this? There we go. But me, I want to do that. I want to do Okay. So let me see. Right. So if I could just ask you all to just to put yourselves on mute, if you can. Mute all. There we go. I'll just put you all on mute. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. One more person coming in. Good stuff. So, hello everyone. My name's Ken. And uh, today I'm just going to show you. I, actually, a couple of weeks ago, I did something on my Instagram. And I asked um, I asked people, what, what would you like to for me to teach you or what lessons would you like? And there was a few things that came up. Vocabulary, obviously, is a massive thing for everybody. Teach us more vocabulary, more idioms. We want to know idioms. So we had vocabulary, we had idioms, and we had grammar points, IELTS. And a couple of things were to kind of introduce yourself when you're at a, maybe a speaking test or a job interview, how to do it kind of effectively. Because I think everyone, if you get put on the spot, introduce yourself. A lot of people will have a blank brain and they, you know, they, they get confused with what they want to, to say. So this short presentation will kind of give you um, an insight as to how to intro introduce yourself in English. And this is something that I taught a lot of my students when I was living out in Asia. So, and if you stay to the end of this, there's a, a little kind of something for you at the end. So I just want to make sure that everyone can hear me. And uh, let's have a look at here. I put this little presentation together. If, you, if there's anything that you want to ask, I, I know there's a chat box here, feel free to, to ask me anything that you wish and I will try and answer it as we go along. If there's anything you don't understand, just hit the chat button and uh, I'll certainly go through it with you. And at the end, there'll be plenty of time for a, a Q&A, hopefully, at the end. It's very, very short, maybe half an hour or so, 40 minutes maximum. And, uh, oops, and uh, so we can have a look there. There's somebody, Latasha, I'm not able to hear what you are saying, I guess. Are you? Everyone else? Everyone else put their thumb up if they can hear me. Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic. Latasha, I don't know why you cannot hear me. Maybe is your speaker on, maybe? Maybe that's what to do with it. Try your speaker, Latasha. Okay. All right, she's got the thumbs up now. Okay, great. So let's have a look. 
So this little presentation that I'm doing is how to give an impressive first impression when you go along to an interview. And it's something that I have really kind of helped students as I've been living and working out in Asia. And at the end of this, we'll have a formula that you can instantly impress and grab the attention of the interviewer. Right at the beginning, first impressions are so important. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, how to grab the attention and uh, make a good impression. And hopefully from then, we're going to stand a better chance of success in the interview. If you've got anything open that's maybe uh, kind of, you know, having a lag with the internet, you know, any uh, apps or anything, if you want to close them down, that'd be fantastic. If you've got a pen and a piece of paper, if you want to take notes, fantastic also. And at the end, we'll record this and uh, we'll record this and uh, it'll be made available um, to you as well. So, who am I? Firstly, let me just kind of, oops, there's somebody wanting in. Admit all, there we go. Admit all, there we go, admit all, admit all. So, who am I? For those that don't know me, uh, for those that don't know me, my name's Ken, Ajarn Ken. My real name is Ken, but Ajarn is the Thai word for teacher or professor because I lived out in Thailand for 10 years. Um, Ajarn Ken, I've kept that name. I am 21 years old, <coughs> if you believe that. And I'm from Scotland in the UK, so I speak British English. Um, <clears throat> what else? I've been teaching English since the year 2008. And since 2008, I've visited around 50 countries and I've worked in 10 countries. So I'm quite aware of cultural awareness, etc., when helping students around the world. And in that time, I've visited 10 countries. I've actually worked in 10 and I've learned to speak four languages conversationally. I'm not fluent. I'm not smooth and fluent by any manner of means, but I did learn to, uh, to speak conversational uh, English, uh, conversational Portuguese when I lived in Portugal for a couple of years, uh, conversational Spanish when I was in Spain for uh, a couple of years as well, and uh, obviously out in Asia, a couple of the uh, Asian languages as well. Now, I lived for 10 years in Bangkok in Thailand, and in the 10 years, I've helped thousands of students kind of improve their English. Now, I know, uh, you know, it's all about speaking, etc. but learning English is all about having the confidence to be, to be able to put into practice what you are learning. And in particular, I was helping university graduates become cabin crew and flight attendants. I would help them to prepare successfully for interviews with airlines all over the world, maybe Air Asia, Singapore, Emirates, Qatar, etc. And hundreds of my students have went on to have careers as cabin crew and flight attendants. So that is where most of my um, experience comes from, helping university graduates. A couple of years ago, I decided to come back to Scotland. And for the last two years, I've been in Scotland, just as, just as kind of the lockdown started. So I've been kind of living uh, in an attic for two years, unable to go out because of the lockdown. Thankfully, it's getting a bit better. So let's have a look. There's two types of impressions that we give. When we immediately go into an interview, when we, when we open the door and walk in, there's two types of impressions that we give. Two types of impressions are, we can give a good impression of yourself or, oops, 
or a bad impression of yourself. This is immediately happens, whether you are aware of it or not. When you walk into a room, the interviewer is trying to suss you out. He's immediately, he will make, an, he will make a decision whether he likes you or not. Now, how do we create an impression? Well, as I mentioned, we will create an impression within the first couple of minutes of our body language, the way we walk, our gestures, um, how, we, how we look at someone, etc. All of these are given off your kind of vibrations as it were, whether they, and the interviewer is going to decide whether they like you or whether they don't like you. And once they've made that decision, they are going to be spending the, you know, the next 20 minutes, however long the interviewer is, they will be spending the next 20 minutes justifying their opinion. So if they don't like you, if, they, if you've given a bad impression, they will spend the, the whole of the interview justifying in their mind, I don't like you because of this reason. If you create a good impression, they will spend the interview thinking to themselves, I really like you, and this is the reason why. So first impressions are so important. At the interview as well, whether they like you or not, they want you to do well at the interview. They want you to give a good account of yourself so that they, they can justify inviting you in for the interview. So, a good first impression. A good first impression is really, really important because it will help pass the first stage of the interview. That's the beast. Maybe there's two, when I was teaching university graduates, there was always maybe three or four, four stages of the interview. And the first stage was always the most important. How to pass the first stage and get taken on to the next one. If you give a good first impression, you're also going to get respect for the, uh, from the interviewer, which is very important to take you on to the next part. Another thing as well, a lot of students, when they went for, you know, the first interview as cabin crew and flight attendants, they maybe wait there for like an hour or two hours or longer. There's maybe thousands, you know, about a thousand people waiting to get interviewed. And then they would get called, their number would get called, they would walk to the desk and the interviewer would say, what's your name? They would say their name and they would say, okay, thank you very much, goodbye. And the interview was over in 10, you know, in 10 seconds, it was crazy. So if you give a good impression the way you walk into the interview, et cetera, this is gonna help the interviewer listen, listen to you during the interview, <clears throat> during the interview. We can also, if we give a good impression, it also helps us to take control of the interview and if we do it through this formula that I'm going to show you, we can actually focus on your strengths when you're at the interview. Because obviously English isn't your number one, isn't your main language for most of you. So being able to put across your strengths in English is going to be very, very important. Okay. Let's have a look. And a couple of people have just came in. I'll let them in. Okay. So this is the reasons why giving a good first impression is going to be very, very important. You're going to pass the first stage. You're going to get respect from the interviewer. You're going to build a relationship with the interviewer. They're going to want to listen to you. They're going to want you to continue. If you give a good impression, you can actually take control of the interview and guide it the way you want it. And we're going to focus on your strength. So when we go for an interview, the first question that we are more than likely going to be asked, tell me about yourself, the dreaded question. What are you going to say? Or they might say, well, who are you? They might say, introduce yourself to us. Tell us a bit about yourself, a bit. A bit just means a little. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So these are going to be the questions that uh, in my experience and in my students' experiences, 
uh, the interviewer is going to be asking you right at the beginning, who are you? And number one is, why are you here? This always kind of stumps a lot of students. Why are you here? I'm here for an interview. So, but it's always, it's all about having the confidence to be able to, to, to put across in a pressurized situation when you're on the spot, uh, an introduction to yourself. So that's the first question. Now, really, really importantly, is uh, a, lot of, a lot of students, they'll hand over their resume or their CV, and then they'll proceed to tell the interviewer exactly what's on their resume. And this is a big mistake that a lot of, that a lot of students make. They will just repeat and regurgitate Regurgitate just means to copy what they have written down on their resume. And this is not the point of introducing yourself. It's not about what's on your resume. The interviewer has this in front of them. They don't want to hear that. They want to know more about your personality. They're there to make small talk during the first question. They're there to, okay, my name's Ken. They want they want to know uh, to want to make a little bit of small talk before they get into the main part of why you are here. They want to find something to talk about with you. We have a we have a word in English called rapport, R A P P O R T, rapport. And if you build rapport, it means that you build a connection with someone. And this is the whole part of the first question. You're building a relationship at the beginning of the interview so that we can move on. You're building rapport. Rapport, maybe finding out things in common since you've done the research on the company. And the interviewer, going back right back to the beginning, the interviewer is sussing you out. Sussing is a great English word. Quite a common word, actually, and it's quite a informal word and sussing means to to form their opinion of you they're trying to form their opinion to suss someone out is to form an opinion of someone that you think is true okay so with the first question remember they they know they have your resume you don't want to keep repeating what's on your resume very very important we're just there to make small talk, to find something in common to talk about, to build a rapport, because the interviewer wants to make an opinion of you. So when the interviewer asks you, go back to the question, tell me about yourself, what are you going to say to them? What are you going to say to the interviewer? Well, the most important thing, as you know, is having preparation, is being prepared. They say, you know, to, to be a success at anything, you have to repeat and repeat and repeat. And to be an expert in something, you have to have 10,000 hours of practice. So preparation is really, really important. And what we're doing here is to give you the, the kind of ideas and skills, etc., and, uh, and uh, suggestions that you can prepare yourself effectively when you are going to introduce yourself. We don't want to be boring. Hi, my name is Ken. I am 21 years old. I come from Scotland. We don't want to be that. We want to give a good, um, you know, a good personality to shine through. As I mentioned, we don't want to repeat your job titles, what's on your resume. Very, very boring. And we don't repeat your resume. So these are the, the things to remember when we are preparing. We have to be very prepared. We don't want to just repeat and regurgitate what's on our resume. We don't want to talk about titles. We want to show our personality when we are and uh, when we have the chance to, to introduce ourselves. So, really easier said than done to be relaxed. 
But if you are prepared, then you will be, if you are comfortable with what you are going to say, you are going to be relaxed. This is something that I always try and put across to my students. They say, Ken, I don't know what to say when, you know, if I'm speaking to a native, I have it in my mind, but when I come to speak, my brain goes blank. And this is all about preparation. If you are prepared, you're going to be relaxed. You're going to come across as friendly. You're not going to be panicking. If you are prepared, you're going to come across as confident. You know exactly what you're going to say. And if you come across as confident and friendly, people are going to like you. You're going to be, you're going to be likable to someone. You're maybe not going to be best friends, but they're going to listen to you and, they, and you're going to be likable to them. And very, 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 very important. If you are prepared and you're confident going through, you're going to be, you're going to come across as very, very approachable. And approachable means similar to likable in that the interviewer is going to feel comfortable in your presence. When you are there, they're, you're going to, they're going to feel very, very comfortable which means they, they'll feel free to ask you questions and follow up questions. They're wanting to speak to you. So preparation is the number one, is the number one thing that we need to do when we are going to be talking about ourselves. We need to know exactly what we're going to say, but not like a robot. We just need to be comfortable and confident with what we are going to say. So first things first, the number one thing, <laughs> you know, when a lot of my students are terrified when they, when they go for an interview in English, they, you can see it in their faces, the color drains and they try and smile and they can't smile, you know, their mouth is all dry, you know, but the number one thing is to smile. So a smile not a fake smile, but a smile is really, really important. You have to be aware of yourself. In English, we have an expression called um, a resting face, resting, R-E-S-T-I-N-G, a resting face. I have a very, very bad resting face. And what this means is when I am relaxed and I am not thinking about myself, my face looks very miserable and very hard. So I have to learn to smile all the time. So number one thing, when you walk in there, you have to smile. A lot of people say filler words are not, are not good, but there is one filler word that is very, very good to know. A filler word is a word that you use when you are thinking of what to say next. Common filler words are like uh, uh, mm, uh, 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 mm, uh. a lot, of, you know, it's that is a very bad thing to have a, a filler word, too many of them. It, it means that you're coming across, you don't know what to say. But one filler word English, English speakers use a lot, and it is the word well. Now, well is very, very important because it tells us what you're going to say next is going to be important, so listen to me. So for example, tell me about yourself, Ken. Well, and then I go into the first part of my introduction. Well gives you a thinking time, a couple of seconds to think. It also grabs the interviewer's attention. They're going to listen to you. You've not went into the introduction yet, but you've said well. You've stopped them thinking, and now they're focusing on you. It's a really fantastic filler word to have, the word well. You're obviously going to say your name. And I know in some countries you have nicknames. When I was in Thailand, um, you know, you would have your official name, you would have your Thai name, then you would have your English nickname, you'd have three names. So what you want to do is you want to put across a name that you want them to call you by. For example, my official name is Kenneth, but not only my mother calls me Kenneth. My friends call me Kenny, which is okay, 
But in a, in a business sense, if I'm teaching, people call me Ken. So that if I was in an interview, this is what I would want them to call me by my nickname. And if you put across the name that you want to be known by, again, it builds this rapport. And as I mentioned, rapport is building something in common that you can begin to talk about. Okay. So the first things first, filler words, start with a filler word, start with um, uh, your, your, your filler word well, my, um, your name, your nickname, and it builds rapport. So let's have a look. Contractions. Most people will say, tell me your name, and they'll say, well, my name is Ken. That's okay, but it sounds like a robot. When you're introducing yourself, it's really kind of, I always feel it's really friendly to use contractions when you are introducing yourself. Don't say my name is, it's very robotic. And it sounds like you're, le you're using the English when you know, you've learned from school, for example. Much better to use I'm. Okay, I'm. So, for example, which uh, introduce yourself. Well, I'm Ken. I'm. If you use contractions in every part or most part of your English, these formal contractions, they help you sound softer when you speak. Okay. So, I'm Ken. Much better to use. You're much more friendly, as I mentioned. Now, when we give our um, our introduction to ourselves, we it's very very short. We've only got maximum of two minutes to give uh, an introduction to ourselves. We have what we call, or what I call, um, the present, past, future formula. Okay the present, the past, and the future formula. This is a great formula to use when you're introducing yourself because you're, you're giving them little blocks. And if someone hasn't met you before, if you, give, if you make it easy for them, they're gonna to listen to you. So your present, your past, and then your future. This would be the structure that I put across to my students when they are introducing themselves. So, what are you doing now? That is, what job are you doing now? What's your job? What past relevant experience do you have? Now, this is really important to, to know the job that you are going for. We need, to, we need to talk about our past relevant experience. Relevant just means something that is important to that situation. So, for example, if I'm going for a job as a, as a cabin crew, but my past experience was cleaning the streets, it's not really relevant to that job, okay? So we have to build our past experience and make it relevant, important to the situation. And what plans do you have for your future? Really important when you go for an interview that you at least have an inkling an inkling, I-N-K-L-I-N-G, an inkling, which means a small idea. If you have a small idea about what you plan to do for the future. So the structure we've got is the present, the past, and the future. Okay. Basically, at this interview, yeah. So the present, let's have a look. When we start off, we said, well, I'm Ken. We talk about our present experience and a great adverb to use is the word currently, what you're doing at the moment, okay? You can use both of them together to emphasize currently, at the moment, I'm doing this, okay? So it's a great way to start. So, for me, for example, I would say, well, I'm Ken. Currently, I'm helping 
prepare university graduates to develop themselves personally and in English to pass interviews as cabin crew and flight attendants with international airlines. Currently, I'm helping prepare university graduates to develop themselves personally and in English to pass interviews in English as cabin crew with international airlines. Okay. I've not told you I'm an English coach. I've not told you I'm an English teacher. I've told you how I am helping people. Okay. Really important when you talk about your present, you're using a lot of uh, positive vocabulary. I'm helping, I'm preparing, I'm helping develop people. Um, I guess I'm, I'm, and I'm also using the word internationally as well. So I've not mentioned my job title. I'm just telling you what the function of my job is, what the end result of my job is. Currently, I'm helping prepare university graduates to develop themselves personally and in English to pass interviews in English as cabin crew with international airlines. So this is what I'm doing at present. As I mentioned, I'm not doing any job titles. I've just told you what the end result for my job is. Now, the second part of, of talking about the present is talking about an achievement. Really important. Now, there's three really, really important words I always tell students to use when you're at an interview, very, very positive. The words like, the words love, and the words enjoy. Really, really key words, really, really important words. This, if you're using this, it's showing off that you're, that you're a positive person, it's showing your personality, you're not sounding like a robot. So we can talk, if you're at university or work, this, this formula still works. So for example, I've told you that um, I help prepare university graduates. As my achievement, I could say something like, I love it, I love it when I can see my students grab an idea in the classroom and use it for themselves. I enjoy it when I get a message from a student telling me they have got their wings, they have become a flight attendant. And inside, I feel really pleased to be part or a small part of their success. It really motivates me because I see how much it means to them and how it can change their lives. I've been doing this for about 10 years. So from there, I've told you that um, I'm helping prepare university graduates. And then I've now told you what I like, what I love and what I enjoy about it. I love it when I can see the students grab an idea and use it for themselves. Find out what you love about your current job. What's real, what you really love about helping people, about making a difference, about working in a team, really important. I enjoy it when I get a message telling me they've, they've had some success, they've become a flight attendant. I feel really pleased with myself that I'm a part of their success. It motivates me, another positive one. It motivates me because I can see how much it means to them. It can change their lives. And then I finish it with, I've been doing this for about 10 years. So the key words in there, where we're talking about loving, liking, and enjoying. We're talking about uh, being pleased and proud. We're talking about motivation, how much it means to them, how much it can change them. And then we are talking about how long you have been doing that as well. So that's the present. Remember the, um, the, the filler words well, use contractions, I'm, and then talk about an achievement. Very important. So, when we're talking as well, remember, I didn't actually list the tasks that I do. I didn't tell you I had to prepare lesson plans. I didn't tell you that I had to take them through exams. 
I didn't tell you that I had to do the register of people that were there. I just told you what the end result is for my job. So think about what's the end result for your, for your job. Be positive. I've given you some great positive words there, like, love, enjoy, motivate, encourage, etc. Really important. And if you if you give a really positive present, this is going to set up the rest of the interview. This is going to make the interviewer sit up and they're going to listen to what you are going to be saying for the rest of the interview. Okay. One second. <clears throat> There. So the past, with the present, we've said currently, with the past, we say previously. One second, I'm trying to get on the help on and H. Okay. Or we can say prior to this. Prior to this, we can say previously or we can say prior. Prior just means before. Different to the word priority, which means important. Prior to this just means before, before this. And then we give an example. Okay, now it has to be kind of relevant to the job that you are going for. And it has to show your personality. that you are bringing to the interview. So for example, for me, it would be prior to this, I was in finance, I helped people with financial planning, helping families to plan for the future. It was a highly responsible job. It allowed me to travel and to work all around Europe. I really enjoyed it and loved getting to know my clients. I built up many great friendships and relationships over my 10 years there. So again, I'm telling you how much I helped people, how much I enjoyed it, what I was good at. And again, I've not told you the tasks that I had. All I'm doing is talking to you about, your, about my personality and what I can bring, my experience that I can bring to this job. So, oops. so we've had, um, here we go. How can, okay, there's a couple of questions. I'll just go through this first. Um, what about when you don't have any experience, you're just a college student, what to say when they talk about, uh, we've talked about your experience. How can they say I'm a fresher? This, this is a really good question because if you don't have any work experience, a lot of my students came direct from university, so they didn't have any job experience. What they did have, they, they, were, they did some voluntary work and they had an internship, okay? So these are the two, these are two things that maybe you've had a university that you can talk about. If you don't have anything of that, you talk about your strengths at university what you did at university. Um, were you the leader in groups, for example, which is very important? Um, how did you make a difference to your colleagues? You talk about how you helped your, your, your fellow colleagues in university. And uh, uh, you talk about how you helped your fellow colleagues in university, etc. So all your, you're not actually and talking about titles, you're talking about your strengths. That's the most important part. Someone else has asked me, if I get this back, um, should you be talking about your, your past uh, in the introduction? As I mentioned, you're not actually talking about job titles as such, you're talking about your personality. That's the one thing that you're talking about. The interviewer has all the details on your resume. All you're doing is you're you're, you've got something planned to talk about that hopefully the interviewer is going to grab on for you and he's going to like about you. 
that's all you're doing at this point. So the future, why do you want to leave your job? Big thing. If you love your job so much, why do you want to leave if you're working at the moment? Very easy to, to answer this question. And again, it's putting across your personality. For example, I'm ready to use all of that experience in a new role. And from what I read about your, uh, your, the position, it sounds very interesting. And it's something I feel that I can that I can be successful at. So all you're doing is you're just confirming that you've got all this experience and you can bundle this experience and bring it to your new position. So it's very, very short, the future. And it's very important that you, that you read about the position that you're going for, very important. This is where you have to do your research. And you're also gonna be telling the interviewer that you want to know more, okay? So the past, present and future is very, very short. It's only maybe a couple of minutes maximum, maximum that, you are, that you're gonna be talking about yourself. You've got plenty of time in the interviewer, in the interview to, to give across more information. All you're doing is you're, you're, you're throwing something to the interviewer so that they listen to you and then they can get you on their side. You're just talking about your personality. You're not talking about job titles or anything like that. You're just talking about your, the good points, the strengths of your personality. So the new job, all about helping. I, the job interview I have talked about really here is all about helping it's all about creating a good teamwork. It's all about being positive in a customer service example. Now, obviously everyone's different. Maybe you're an engineer, maybe a translator, whatever your job, you, you, the job that you're going for, you're gonna to have to adapt this to fit with your new position that you're going for, okay? But the structure is always there. The present, the past, and a little bit of the future. Always show that you are helping people, always show that you can work in a team and always be positive. And very important, you have to read about the position and do your research. Very, very important. Okay. <clears throat> this is where you know the job and the company. So when I was um, helping university graduates, the lesson that I did on this would take about an hour and we would get, get the students to write down what, you know, what their present is, even if they are in university, what strengths do they have at the moment? What do they like? What do they love? What were they doing before? Uh, what, what, were the, what was their strengths before? And a little bit for the future. Good stuff. Does anyone have any anything they want to ask at the moment? Any questions that they want to put across? I'm more than happy to to answer them. No? This is where we talked about before. Someone's asked me if you're a fresher, if you if you just graduated from university, you don't have much experience. Talk about what you learned at university. One of the Another key interview question that they ask is, you know, certainly for a cabin crew job, is what did you learn at university? Not what you studied, but how did you develop yourself? How did you develop from the minute you went to university to when you left? How did you change yourself? What things did you learn about yourself? So even though you're maybe not in a job, the, what you learned at university and how you developed yourself is very, very important as well. As I mentioned before, maybe if you don't have a full-time job, maybe you had an internship, a part-time job, very important. Maybe you were volunteering as well. A lot of students I worked with in Asia, they would all do a lot of volunteering in their uh, university life. 
which I always suggested to them to uh, to use. Okay. How to prove the interviewer that we are honest for our work? Okay. How to prove to the interviewer that we are honest? I guess the we have a, we have an expression in English called the proof is in the pudding, and what it means is the interviewer is going to get um, a sense of who you are. If you interview, if you give you give across yourself positively, the interviewer is going to know who you are. If you can back up, which means if you can give evidence of how good you are during the interview. This is how the interviewer is going to believe what you're saying is correct. So this is how you prove you're honest. You back it up with evidence. So that is that is an introduction to yourself, okay? How you uh, prepare for introducing yourself to an interview. Very, very short, as I mentioned, very, very short. I hope you've kind of gained something from this. I'm going to be doing a part two of this and how you are going to prepare yourself and uh, what to start talking about when you're actually in the interview. Someone's asked me here, what to say if the interviewer asks why do you want to leave your current organization and are you considered to be a job hopper? A job hopper, yeah? Hopping from one job to another. You will see it, the interviewer will see it on your resume, whether you are a job hopper or not, okay? If you give across, the key when you go for an interview is never say anything bad. Even if you hate your job, your current job, you hate your boss, you never, 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 never say that. All you say is, as I mentioned before, I'm looking to take all my experience and move it into this job that I find really interesting from what I've read about. That's all you need to say. Something along those lines that you're wanting to take your experience into a new position, okay? And the interviewer is gonna know whether you are a job hopper or not, Mohit, okay? So the next thing we've got, I'm gonna be doing a part two, which are gonna be the five things to prepare. Okay, there are going to be five things to prepare. Okay, and uh, if you want to join this, we're going to be doing this over the next week or so. Someone else has asked me, why did you apply for this job? Again, this is the same thing as Ahmed, as what, what you want your future to be. Why did you apply for this job? I applied for this job because I want to take all my experience that I've got and move it into a new position. That's all you need to say. And from there, we can then show the interviewer your skills and how you can benefit that company, okay? No problem, no problem. So the part two is gonna be up over the next week or so. If you want to join that, I'll be putting an email out for you. If there's any other questions that you want to ask me, if there's any other questions, put them in the chat box. I have my English club, which you've probably seen. And then here there's like 10 interview courses if you want to, uh, many interview courses that I use with my students, interview questions, we break them down into video lessons, how you should prepare, the vocabulary that you should use, etc. The most popular questions. The video lessons will give you an understanding of the, of the interview questions. We're gonna give you the vocabulary and structure how to answer these interview questions. And also in the courses, there are assignments also. You can actually um, do the assignment and I will mark it for you so that you are totally prepared for an interview question. Also in the club, we do some coaching. We have regular meetups. We do practice conversations. We can ask questions. We get you confident in English also. So that's in the English club that we do. There's personal video lessons. If you want to ask questions, I will do personal video lessons for you. And there's dictations. If you're doing IELTS, there's dictation topics that will help improve your listening for IELTS questions. 
full speaking test examples as well. It'll help to improve your writing. So that's the English club that it's a lead on from here. The speaking lessons as well. I'll send out all these to you. If you want to join it, you're free to join it. It's normally about 600 pounds, UK pounds, but we've got the membership club and it's 12 pounds a month if you wish to join. Up to you if you want to join. I'll send you an email with part two of this uh, of the of these lessons and if you want to join then you're more than welcome to join if you have any more questions does anyone have any questions anything they want to ask me while we're here no okay. what i'll do is i'll upload this onto my um youtube and uh I'll make it um, and I'll send you I'll send you all the link for it so that you can have it as a reference and I'll send out the the slides for this as well so you can have them there as a point of okay anything else you want to ask anything else anybody wants to ask that's been about 50 minutes no Nothing else? Okay, guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or get in touch on my Instagram. I'm more than happy to, uh, to go through things with you. And uh, if there's no more questions, I will say my goodbyes to you just now, okay? So thanks very much for your time, guys. And uh, I'll speak to you hopefully on Instagram, yeah? Goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.